And we're back. Unlike the original Suspiria, witchcraft is hidden in plain sight in this film. And there's a few extra details found in the screenplay as well. Let's take a look. Hands play a prominent role in this film. They hold the power to create or destroy. They can be folded into beautiful gestures or contorted for violence. Here's a few examples, magical and non. In the first dream sequence in the film, there are several instances of hands cropping up, including young Susie uses her hands to masturbate, going against her Mennonite upbringing. Later, in the screenplay only, she holds her hands up and gestures in front of her mother, almost as if she's instructing her on the new thing that she's learned. Her mother responds in kind by burning her hands with an iron. Hands are prominent on the Marcos poster found early in the film. Also, take a look at the image itself. Eyes are present on the hand, and I'm thinking the subtle shape of the eye is not a coincidence in representing female genitalia. Madame Blanc places hands on Susie's neck, relaxing and possibly imbuing her with power. Madame Blanc's gestures while dancing move from graceful to violent, forceful stabs, much like the motions used by Susie in Olga's destruction. In the second sequence, we see self-harm scars. Maybe another reference to feminist art, or more literally a reference to self-harm or breaking one's self down. Strangest of all, we see a young woman with hands upon hands. She's holding a marionette hand and curiously has a smaller doll's hand on her pinky. This either references the three mothers or the generational love of an older matron, a younger apprentice, and her young apprentice in tow. Peppered throughout the film are Susie's response to Madame Blanc's question about what role she wants to play in the troupe. Madame Blanc enchants Susie with her hands on Susie's hands and feet and imbues her with purpose before her Volk dance and Olga's destruction. Madame Blanc also lays hands over Susie, much like one would in a charismatic church. For your help with that. Hair, urine, and eyes. At the start of the film, during Patricia's impromptu therapy session, she mentions that the witches have taken her hair and urine and also her eyesight. Interestingly enough, there is such a thing as a witch's bottle, meant to ward off the spells of witches, and they often contained hair and urine along with other strange items such as pins, needles, and nails. Though the witches likely used the ingredients as part of love spells, or spells meant to keep the young girls entranced and blissfully unaware of the evils surrounding them. Hair is used very matter-of-factly in the first dream sequence in the film. The scene plays out differently in the screenplay, and I'll be covering that in another video, but the scene plays out how Susie perceives it. The witch's spell over the police detectives is rendered in hideous detail. Frightening web-like cords have the men trapped, and their mouths are shut with what appears to be the same hair color as the one casting the spell, Miss Hooler. Patricia spies the Eye of Providence on a fake Freemasonry book. She hears whispers and various voices, which prompts her to hide the witches from spying on her. She begins to hide anything with eyes, including what is presumably a photo of young Anka. Eyes are also used in the original. The disfigured corpse of Sarah has her eyes pinned like a voodoo doll. The step was likely necessary for the witches to control her when she was reanimated. Also, there's a similar Freemason's eye in Mother Marcos's bedchamber. In the film, before the main ceremony room, is a portrait of Marcos and Madame Blanc, and the photo is encircled with clumps of hair. And in the final ceremony, we see the collected locks of hair plastered as high as the ceiling. And I can't believe I missed this on my many repeat viewings. Prior to the final performance in the film, eye colors of select dancers straight up change. I initially thought Sarah's change was due to, you know, death, but I missed that Susie's eyes changed as well. It seems as though Madame Blanc has a perversion and prefers certain eye colors over others. Neat. <sighs> Lastly, the girls learn the Volk dance blindfolded so that they aren't spooked by the chaos of the final ceremony. It appears that they are not blindfolded in the film, but only in the screenplay. The hook itself is likely not imbued with magic of any sort, but it's used to transport bodies and prepare them for ceremonies or Sabbaths in the film. It's possible that this is a reference to the three hooked sticks that were once considered a sorcerer's charm for black magic. In the film, they are clearly modeled after a human rib, a nod to God's creation of women as a helpmeet to Adam in the Bible. The language of dance is explained by Madame Blanc, words that form sentences like poems or prayers. It is revealed that she has no trouble reading Susie's executions, suggesting supernatural mastery. Susie hears a language in the sighs throughout the entire film, and when it's revealed that it's not a language Marco speaks, she remains dismissive. 
In the film, Sarah overhears a ceremony early on to try and keep Miss Griffith from dying after her suicide attempt. She's drawn to a hidden room by their chants and mantras. They are unsuccessful, and it is deemed that they were simply too slow to react. Entrails and organs are used in divination, the interpreting of omens or other supernatural agency, usually within a religious context. In the film, entrails are shown in some of the hectic dream sequences and featured in the final ceremony meant to renew Helena Marcos. All three sacrificial girls whose body and mind did not take are vivisected in preparation for the final girl. In the screenplay, Dr. Klemperer is fed entrails and other accoutrements in the feast. Thankfully, this is absent in the film, because it's super gross. Mirrors are also used in divination and can redirect unwanted attacks back to those casting them. They can obscure or obfuscate. The screenplay for Suspiria describes how witches hide behind them to monitor the girls in the academy. Inward. Miss Milius, Miss Mandel, can you close the mirrors, please? Miss Marks, no music. I want to start work on a new piece. A piece about rebirth. In ancient Egypt, the lotus represents birth, resurrection, or reincarnation because of the way its seeds can lie dormant for centuries and then grow into a plant in the right conditions. It is also the symbol of enlightenment and fertility. A white lotus can represent fertility, knowledge, and faith, while a red lotus can symbolize love, passion, and kindness. It's an odd detail that a presumably white lotus is painted red, almost as if they wish to graft the red qualities where they don't belong. I suggest this foreshadows the coven's misplaced faith in Marcos and the fact that Marcos is a compassionless fraud. Amongst the precious items are artifacts kept by the coven. There are dozens of objects made of silver or porcelain. The objects described are hands, feet, fertility stuff, genitals. Some are figurative, a trio of women, some mythical beasts, a dog. I suspect the trio of women are representations of the triple goddess found in neo-paganism. The figures are described as the maiden, the mother, and the crone, each representing a stage in the female life cycle. They can also represent the three mothers more directly, Mother Suspiriorum, Mother Tenebrarum, and Mother Lacrimarum. The black dog is often associated with the devil, or a hellhound, and is found in folklore of the British Isles. They are often directly associated with death. There are mentions of benevolent dogs that act as protectors. It's possible that the charm is a ward that protects the witches, and results in death to those who would try and peer into their hidden group. Thanks for humoring me and letting me dive back into this film one more time. If there's anything I missed, anything super cool, or even if you think it's boring, just let me know down in the comments. Until next time, bye.